My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 11,350 kilometers so far and I've got 5,250 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, a robbery at gunpoint, near death in the jungle, a brutal crash, horror infested waters, malnutrition, sickness and injuries and raised £138,000 for charity. In this episode, I reveal the true cost of the mission, how we stay afloat and explain how I went from this bloke here to the man attempting to run the length of Africa. Russell Cook. So I've got a big question to start off today. Well, how much does it cost to run the entire length of Africa? Oh, depends if you want to have numpties like these lot come with you. I mean, the short answer is probably knocking on the door of about 200k. What do you even mean, Russ? 200k? You're only running. But bought this vehicle, it's 18 grand. We also shipped the van to South Africa, about seven or eight grand. Plus then we all flew to South Africa, stayed in South Africa for a month. By that point, we basically had no money left. And then um, mission costs, two vehicles with diesel in at all times. Food, everyone's gets paid, so there's that expense. Visas. They're a huge one. Seven, eight grand. I'd have thought so, genuinely. Shit, yeah. Flights. The original crew have all been on holiday. New team beams coming in. A lava seven, eight grand on flights. There's equipment that we've bought. Fucking hell. Let's not forget repairs. I spent more on repairs for Nelly than, than I paid for Nelly in the first place. <laughs> then comes the question of how do you pay for it? Well, Russ. Yeah, go on. Don't you think you should get some running in before we reveal that to the people? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I should. I leapt onto the road for my first 25K for no other reason than to keep you all in suspense. My body was slowly beginning to claw itself back from the brink of giving up. Just to keep you waiting even longer, the boys got acquainted with some more stunning wildlife on the way. So, Russell, could you tell me how you managed to, as a man with little to nothing to his name, yeah. fund from the beginning a £200,000 project? I can Stanley. Thank you, I Russell. I can tell you all about it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, the first step was getting an investor. That's quite a hard task. But eventually, I found someone and I managed to persuade him that this was going to be a success. Um, <laughs> then next stage was kind of recruiting a team. And then things got delayed. We were gonna start November 2022. Ended up delaying until February 2023. During that period, started burning through more cash than we anticipated. Things are looking a little bit south. We definitely need an influx of cash. And a few things that we had lined up kind of fell through. The Algeria situation, our visas got denied. Staring at the start of the mission with like literally next to nothing. At the 11th hour, I arranged a meeting with Givestar, told them about the situation with Algeria and that we needed to go to South Africa. Givestar coming through saved the mission before it even started. What also happened during that time is we set up a Patreon. Big shout out to everyone that subscribed to the Patreon and still subscribes to the Patreon because the mission wouldn't have happened without you. Yeah, and then, you know, eventually we got everything to South Africa and everything went to shit. Everyone deferred their wages. We kept costs to an absolute minimum. About two weeks into the project, we'd caught a decent amount of traction. I don't think it could have gone better than we'd hoped for. Like I'd reached out to Stephen Bartlett like a year ago previous, just like on a speculative one, trying to see if he would be interested in helping. And then he reached out like two weeks in or something like this. He was really excited about Perfect Ted. He told me all about it. And I was like, that sounds great. They became a sponsor, then Huel became a sponsor. These things were kind of crucial to the sustainability of financially securing the project. Big thanks to Stephen, big thanks to Perfect Head, big thanks to Huel, big thanks to Hoka who are a sponsor, big thanks to Givestar, wouldn't have happened without them. 
and big thanks to you guys. To be fair, especially the ones that subscribe to the Patreon, but even watching our YouTube videos brings in a revenue, which funds the mission. So watching the videos, sharing them with your pals or subscribing is actually a massive help. So many YouTubers go, I love you guys. You guys are the reason I'm here. You guys made everything. But I mean, it's so true in this case. Like yeah. we literally would have failed. Pretty awesome that it, it worked out in the end. I say it's worked out. It's not like we're balling out here. 260 something days in, whatever. The project still hasn't actually made a profit yet. Well, I have yeah, more questions, but you've got some more running to do, ain't I you? I do have more running to do, that is correct. Off you pop. Off I go. Oh, that is tricky. Feeling grateful simply to be there, I jumped onto the road without complaint. It's mad to me that we live in an era where someone like me can fund their dream project purely through putting content like this out onto the internet. Thank you so much for supporting this truly underdog effort and for keeping us afloat against all the odds. Just a grown man downing an entire carton of Arabic pineapple juice. Ananas. Sorry, I'm not very cultured. Ananas. I want to conclude our little chit chat about money. We've learned money, money, money. How broke little Russ Cook made his dreams come true. Yeah. Now I want to talk about what happens next. What's the plan? What's the goal? What is the plan from here on out? basically try not to have any major things go wrong that cost a lot of money <laughs> what do you mean like a drone flying into a burning field that, these things are not ideal i can't lie but i'm talking like car crash death death would be bad that would be expensive that wouldn't would it expensive. pr disaster mate and then get to the finish line start scheming up next big adventure oh what will it be I've got a ton of ideas, none of them are ready to reveal just yet, girls and boys. Wow. But this party isn't stopping at the end of Project Africa, don't you worry about that. Big things, big things coming. How big? Massive, absolutely gargantuan in size and girth. How is it to wake up every morning to such beautiful views? It's pretty nice, eh? Do you even realise it? No, <laughs> most of the time I don't, I'll be honest. It's not the first thing I think about. I should be more grateful. Why do we think Guinea is called Guinea? And why do we have equatorial? Equatorial Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, eh? And Papua, Papua Guinea. New Guinea, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping it might have something to do with Guinea pigs, but I haven't seen any Guinea pigs whilst I've been here. So I'm guessing there's another reason why it's called Guinea. So in the old days, yeah. when the first European sailors came to Africa, they yeah. were like, all these people, they're like, they're black, so they called whole West Africa Guinea. That's how a lot of places in Africa came to be called something with, with Guinea. What does Guinea mean? Guinea comes directly from the Portuguese word Guin, a generic term for the black African peoples south of the Senegal River. Ah, yeah. Having finally figured out which way I was going, hit the road for another glorious day on the African tarmac. The sun was out, sizzling my ginger skin, the tarmac was hotter and I was sweating my nut off. Paradise. But suddenly, the world was ripped out from under me, the tarmac was nowhere to be seen. We're driving a road, just transitioned from beautiful tarmac instantly to it. It's a mountain pack, cyclist Jude that we met. He described it as the road from hell. His footage, there were a bunch of people having accidents, robots on fire. Excited for what's to come. My favourite thing about this road, it has speed bumps. Yeah. Is that one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. That was a speed bump. That was. Promise <laughs> I didn't feel out of The road from hell might have been a bit much, but for me, without the protection of a vehicle, the dust and the fire were brutal. Filling my lungs with smoke and thick red dirt as I struggled up the heavy elevation across uneven ground. But for a Scottish blood ginger, there was one upside. Yeah, I actually do look tanned. You've seen your ankles. <laughs> Jesus. Nice. Whoa. That breathed in so much shit, isn't it? They seem to have set fire to half of Guinea as well. I felt like I was going to pass out right through some of them smoke fields. Yeah. Decent call. <laughs> Sick. Stan. Jamie. I've just seen a snake. I think it's time to assemble the twats. <laughs> Get the binoculars. What colour was the snake? The black snake. I think that means it's safe, doesn't it? I'm sure it does. Let's go and have a look. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of National <laughs> You meant to say it at the same time. Intro. Another episode of National, National <laughs> Thank you.
So it went over into those rocks up there. How do you think you tempt the snake out? I usually go with noises. I don't think a caca is going to work this time. Try it. Caca! Nope. I'm struggling with that one. There is genuinely a snake in here. How big? Uh, about two meters long. That's quite big. Do they have black mambas here? Google. <laughs> this is the research side of Just have a quick Google when you're next to the animal. Do you want to start moving some rocks? Yeah. Yeah? Wait, really? I've literally not seen a single live snake in Africa. I've, yeah. eat a ba I've eaten a battered snake and yeah, I just haven't seen a living one. I'm just going to put my foot there and tempt it out. <laughs> what if we just put some cheese out? <laughs> to catch a rat that we can use to catch the snake. Exactly. I mean, I was literally just walking over this field and it was in front of me. That's rocks. Ah. There's some people. <laughs> I'd say that's a job well done. I think we should go back to the rocks. It's really stupid. Which, when did it enter? It entered right there. The thing is, it's f***ing, it's two metres long, so and yeah. it's a small pile of rocks. Like, how many places can it be hiding? We were quite thin. Snakes do have holes. I saw it. <laughs> Did you actually? <laughs> I just saw its little tail move away from the light. Yeah, that was really scary. It's right in the heart of the pile. Oi! <laughs> See these legs? Bet you wish you could have them. <clears throat> Where is it going? Maybe it's moving away from all the rocks falling over. Get bin. We'll get our team of researchers to put up the name of the snake that we've just antagonized for 10 minutes. So we and could give it a name. John. National Twats. National Twats. Sick to death of having a bunch of idiots for a support crew. I made a quick getaway, running into the sunset like a ginger Icarus. It was slow progress, but my body was showing signs of improvement. And this was the first time Bloody Piss hadn't followed food poisoning. So I was doing something right. A casual 25k later, and another day was done. Ugh. Do you think there's anyone in Worthing who doesn't watch Bananas Kisses? Absolutely, yeah. It's funny you say that, because when I was in Worthing with you, you got stopped at every street corner, mate, and that was before you even started. <sighs> Worthing is a glorious place. There is an increasing influx of young people coming to Worthing these days. Things are happening down there. A couple of people get stabbed, which is a little bit bad. We got Sainsbury's, we got Tesco, we got Asda, kind of. We're actually quite well known for the amount of Tesco Expresses in Worthing. Bustling nightlife, we've got a bar called Bartend, which is actually where my mum and dad met. Something else that's worth visiting Worthing is the goose because the goose sells pints of hardest geezer basically the pub said we're going to support the cause russ we're going to name the house beer hardest geezer and every and 50p from every sale of this pint goes towards the charity fundraiser which is great well do you know what i was thinking about travel plans after project africa well i was thinking of vietnam but now you've persuaded me i'm just going to come and stay with you and emily and with him for a month i'll stay uh, yeah let's revisit that um, i can sleep on the sofa that's all right isn't it yeah i think my fuel's ready Okay. Actually. We'll pick this up then. You did make it sound really good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's great. Oh, I think there's actually, I think I know someone that you can rent really cheap in the other side of the country. So. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, cheap. No, Appreciate right. that, man. You're a good friend. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All good. All good. Bye, mate. So. Love you. Welcome back to another day in paradise. We're going to have a lovely swim in this nice river just next to a camp spot. We're going to have a small dive. Let's do it. After taking a cheeky bath myself, I left the tranquility of the river and entered the chaos of the African tarmac network. As we headed north for the first time in West Africa, the climate was changing rapidly as I moved slowly towards the Sahara. With only a few days of Guinea left, this final boss was starting to feel real. How's Guinea today? About the same, it's getting pretty dry out here. Starting to get a bit more yellow, so the Sahara do be coming. You're looking mm -hmm. forward to the Sahara? The Sahara is closer to Tunisia and the Tunisia means I can go home, so yeah. <laughs> what is your daily motivation to run these days? 
It's kind of like asking someone what's your daily motivation to get up and go to work. It's not really a conscious thought, is it? You just do it at this point. It's just a heavily set routine. Do you think there's any benefit in the kind of occasional moan about how much of a sh** I I think there is. I think it would be very fake and forced to pretend that there's not hard times. I think it also depends the type of moaning it is because there's moaning that's like I genuinely don't want to be here moaning and then there's moaning like I want to be here, I'm still going to get it done, I'm just having a little f***ing moan. Very different things I think. Mm. Alright, I'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit mate. But I wasn't moaning today, the Sahara was daunting sure, but the prospect of reaching the end came with it. However, as I ran, I found out some news that put all of that in jeopardy. Good evening. How was the road? That was a bit of a long shift. Bit of a late start, wasn't it? Because we yeah. were just figuring out game plans. Can you give me a cryptic clue for the YouTube audience? Cryptic clue. All of those logistical issues that kind of seem a thing of the past at this point because we've just swimmingly gone through most of Africa. They might be returning, girls and boys. In a big way. It's a big comeback. In a pretty emphatic way. But we will have to wait and see. There is a few plays left to make and um, we're going to make them. Weird, it's like the only reference for how to mine shit is playing Minecraft. What's this all about, eh? So what do you reckon the strat here is then? Like they go deep to see if they're in the right spot with one and then they're like, nah, this is shit. let's go somewhere else. I'm also really wondering. So often with mining you try to find a vein, especially if it's like small scale mining like this. Yeah. And once you have a nice vein, you try to follow that one. These ones all go straight down. It's a bit funny as well. What do you reckon it is they're mining for? Where are we going, Gustavo? Gonna take a look in a local illegal gold mine. Nice. Oh, gold. Is it? It's gold. Hello. Bonjour. Don't kill anyone. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Sorry. What an amazingly cool place. Nestled in the middle of a valley. Yeah. People come, saw an opportunity, built a whole village. Pretty f***ing sick. We've been walking for probably about a kilometre now. I think it's more. Probably more. Yeah. It's just endless holes. Seems to be massive. Hundreds of people all carrying shovels, pickaxes. Like the amount of manual labour that goes into something like this. And God knows if they even make a profit. Tu viens ici tous les jours? So he comes here every day. Mm -hmm. So like I understand that uh, one of the guys that we pet, he's a big buyer. So when he finds gold, he sells it to this guy. On doit me donner 5, 10, 10 centimes. During the reap, they will work with three men usually. A normal amount of gold they can find is about three grams. On a good week, they will earn 500,000 Canadian francs a person, around $50. That's on a good week. Mm. So I just asked Alpha, is there a lot of accidents happening with people falling in the holes? His response was, yes. So we're actually here chilling with one of the few locals. Most of the people walking in this mining area are actually uh, foreigners from Sierra Leone and Burkina Faso. Once they remove the top layer, they're going to find the bottom layer with a lot of gold. And they're going to try to wash the gold out of that. The machine that comes the low, on met the terre. On met the terre. The grand pièce rest here. The mineral is déjà lavé, on met. Just explain me the process. So that's like a water pump. It pumps water to the modified wheel we're all here. The big stones, they stay behind. The gold and clay, it sticks to the layer underneath. There's a layer of carpets there, and the gold will be stuck in the carpets. And after washing the carpets, they will find the gold. We really love how they also spread out the water by putting leaves attached to the hose. Oh, yeah. Could you just ask them, I want to clarify whether they ever use anything like to fix each other, though? They do. No. So that's all they use, that's all their equipment. These guys who are already living here for generations, in 2002, it was discovered that it's gold here. See? for the whole world to come here, try to get some gold. But once the gold started to finish slowly, people started to disappear again. They're not finding the big money anymore, but like small amounts of gold are still coming. It's all in God's plan. Sometimes we find almost nothing, but then the next day can be a jackpot. That's all up to God, if it will be enough to survive. 
Check up, guys, it's that called man. We don't work together, we work simply. The group of us, what we earn is what we eat. As the boys began to trek back from the gold mine, I was out on the road grafting. Today was another 50k day and I smashed it out with violent ferocity. I was glad to be leaving Guinea soon. I don't think their roads could take much more of a beating, but worrying about those mysterious logistical issues was eating away at me as I moved. Oh, is that a rustle in the bushes? Unsettled and nervous, I settled into bed. But it's safe to say it's going to be a bumpy road to victory, and trust me, you're not going to want to miss this. <laughs> 